We are live. Yes, we are. <laughs> and in person. Here we are. Hi, guys. Welcome. It's Wednesday, the 10th of February already. A big weekend coming up this weekend. Our top story today is three reasons why we're not in a housing bubble. That's right. This time versus a decade ago, um, the housing is extremely limited. So you know basic economics 101, when demand is up and supply is down, prices are going to naturally go up. Naturally. You're right. And uh, the high demand, low surprise, uh, low supply, high demand, low supply, inventory is now under two months. The average is about six months for a healthy market. That's not a buyer's or seller's market. So, we're down to two months, definitely a seller's market, but we've got historically low interest rates, so that's number one. That's right. So, number two is this time versus a decade ago, the housing demand is real. That the, There's a statistic that we like to track that kind of shows us this mortgage, I want to get it right, the Mortgage Credit Availability Index. Now, before the boom, uh, it was 400. And in 2006, at the height of the boom, it was 868. And the higher this number is, the easier it is to get a mortgage. Currently, that number is 122.5. So right now, um, it's actually a good thing that people, you know, they're going to check your credit and your tax returns. You have to do more than fog a mirror right now to get a loan. <laughs> That's right. The demand is real. I mean, the millennials now are the largest group in the country. And they're at an age where, you know, they're getting married, they're having children, and those are two large drivers for home ownership. They are actively in the market, and that's the largest segment in the real estate market right now, are the millennials. Uh -huh. Yep. And COVID has been a challenging um, time. It's challenged everyone's needs, and they're reevaluating um, what they need. Uh, do they need a home office? They're homeschooling. Do they want to be in the city? Do they want to be in a suburb? Do they want to move closer to mom and dad? to help with the kids that are homeschooling. There's all kinds of changes in people's housing needs um, over the past year. As a matter of fact. Yes, 21% of all the people now are working from home. That's a huge number. It's never been that large ever. A lot of that, you know, COVID-19 related, homeschooling, everybody has home office, everybody's headed to the home because we've been on some pretty strategic lockdowns here in California. Mm-hmm. So number three reason why we're not in a housing bubble this time uh, versus a decade ago, households have plenty of equity in their home. So, you know, last time people were using their home equity like an ATM machine and they were cashing out uh, their money, refinancing and spending it on other things. And then when the housing prices came down, they ended up underwater on their mortgage, which means that they owed more. Um, than the home was worth. So that's what created the bubble uh, when the market crash happened you know, about 10 years ago. That's right. In fact, we read a number that was almost $900 billion was taken out during the housing bubble a decade ago in refinance, cash out refinances. $900 billion. So that hasn't happened this time, has it? Yeah. That's a lot of RVs. <laughs> yeah, people have learned from that. The equities now in home is higher than it's ever been. Now, of course, part of that is the markets have gone up. We understand that, but guess what? There is a number here, 38% of all homeowners in America own their home outright. No mortgage. They don't owe a penny on it. And then there's a category called equity rich. And then if you take that number, and that is somebody that owes 50% of the home's value or less, that number jumps up to almost 57% of all the homes in the U.S. right now are in the equity-rich category. That's just phenomenal. I mean, unlike a decade ago, not even close. Yeah, and people are not cashing that equity out this time. And there's 59 million mortgages in the United States. I thought that was another huge number. Yeah, that's a huge number. So you put the 38% of the people that own their own homes without a mortgage on top of that. So home ownership alive and well in America today. That's right. So that is terrific. So those are our three reasons why we're definitely not in a housing bubble. 
So. We have some, today is the 10th, which means our numbers have come out today. They come out on the 10th of every month for the previous month. So we have some amazing numbers to share from January 2020 to January 2021. That's right. This is Ventura County. So what we've taken is January of 2020 in January of 2021, nothing in between, just January and January, and comparing those two together. And we pulled out some of the key statistics that we like to tell you guys uh, every month. One of them is the average sales price. It is up 20%, 20%, it's just crazy. So the average sales price now in Ventura County is almost a million dollars at $989,000, wow. Wow, that went up quick, didn't it? Twenty percent in a year? That's or, well, it's not a year. It's actually January of twenty, right. uh, January of twenty-one. The new listings are down almost twenty-two percent. So that's that, where you're feeling the squeeze. Yes, that's where you know. And naturally, prices are going higher. Right. Because that's uh, economics one hundred and one: supply and demand. When you have a huge demand, low supply, naturally prices are going to go up. And another thing forcing the squeeze, days on market is down almost 41%, down from 66 days on the market average uh, to 39 days. That still feels long to me, but uh, that's what the statistics say. <laughs> well, it seems long, but every time that uh, we have homes in escrow, every one of them is a fire drill. Oh. You know, it's just like, get it done like yesterday, and we're talking everything. There's no room to breathe today. It right. is just go, go, go. Everyone's excited to close. So yes, that page one there. Well, then one more on there. List price versus oh. um, uh, sales price is over 100% for the first time. So when you, the average is things have sold 100.5%. So things are closing over the asking price on average. So that's another just outrageous statistic um, that we wanted to share. That just adds to explaining why the squeeze is, why there's multiple offers on things, and why now is the perfect time to list your house. Yeah, it's a total reflection, like Lisa just said, of the market. So all the properties that are priced right, ready to go, hey, if they're priced right and not ready to go, we're receiving multiple offers on every single listing. And everybody out there is. I mean, it's not unheard of 10 and 20. I don't think I've heard of 30 yet because at some point, you cut it off, but uh, definitely over 20 offers on every property, or not on every property, but on some properties out there. So it is a buying frenzy for sure with the historically low interest rates. Which really puts the seller in the driver's seat. So if you have been holding off sell, uh, selling your home and one of these three categories you fall into, let's talk. The three main reasons that people didn't list their home uh, in the last 12 months uh, 31% said financial uncertainty. This was a survey that was done. 34% said life is too uncertain. And 25% had the ho had COVID health concerns. So those are the main three reasons that people didn't list their homes in 2020. But we know that they're out there and people are ready and willing and able uh, to move on with their lives. So now would be the perfect time to list your home. That's right. Survey says it always reminds me of Family feud. Survey says, okay, so. <laughs> now, are there going to be a bunch of foreclosures? We don't see it. And why don't we see it, Lisa? Yeah, we don't see it because the forbearance, people that went into forbearance, you know, at the beginning or the middle of, of the COVID lockdowns, 52% um, of those people are already out of forbearance. And the rest have gotten loan modifications, and there's only 15% that are still in trouble. So I don't see a foreclosure crisis or a foreclosure amount of inventory coming on the market with only 15% of those people um, still you know, in a crisis uh, situation. Yeah, right. At the beginning, let's say mid-March, when we first went on the lockdown, everybody was just petrified that the forbearance was going to go into foreclosures, was going to go into you know, people not paying, and it was just going to be a free fall in the market. But that's not what has happened. At all. In fact, it's just the opposite of that happened. I'm looking forward that we'll have February's numbers in March, and of course March's numbers in April, and it makes us to see that because of the graphs and statistics I've been looking at. You know, basically the real estate market fell off a cliff in March of 2020, mm -hmm. but boy, did it climb itself back up in a hurry. Right. That it did. So, 
Our question of the day is, what are you going to buy or sell in 2021? Now's the time. It is definitely market timing is perfect. And we're just anxious to hear your comments and things going on on what you're doing. Yeah, so if you want to talk about uh, real estate, that's what we do. It's what we love to talk about. And it is definitely a seller's market right now. So if you have a property you want us to come and look at it or, or walk through with you, we are happy to do that so you know where to find us. Yes, absolutely. We've got a global network. We can do the walkthroughs. If we can't do it, we can find somebody will that, that is an expert in the field. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.